Dave, and this is Steve Edwards, and that is what we do. Talk mule and donkeys uh, for an hour every Wednesday. Uh, we have so much fun spending time together uh, with you, the mule and donkey, and greater equine community. And Steve, you're not where you usually are today. It looks like you're somewhere else. Where in the world are you? Uh, right now, I'm in New Mexico, Ky uh, Sky City Casino. Is where we're just pulled into where we had enough uh, power and bars and this sort of thing. Got about two more hours to get to the ranch we're going to. Uh, I've been hired by a ranch to come over there and work with their cowboys and their mules. And we're going to put together a safety program for them and a communications program for them. Taking these cowboys from them. Horses to the mules. <laughs> That's awesome. How about that, huh? That's awesome. We're taking over the uh, we're taking over the, the the competitions and we're taking over the ranches too. There you are. You know, you betcha. You know, not only you know you see Eric Palmer with that uh, Dutch warm blood uh, friend of his that's selling that mule. And then my granddaughter, now that's Dutch warm blood. Now that's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar horse. That they bred to a jack and made themselves a mule. Woo! Man, can you imagine what that jumping bugger would do? Then, of course, I'm not got to brag on my granddaughter again. You know, my granddaughter uh, going to the horse show, open horse show. So that means any kind of equine to be showing, and she beats every horse there. Yes. That's a proud granddad right there. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, folks, what we do every Wednesday is, as I mentioned, we come and talk mules and donkeys, and that's what we're going to do here. So uh, there's three things that we ask. If you've watched us more than once, more than twice, more than three times, you're probably able to recite it by heart exactly what it is we ask all of y'all to do. Number one, I'll give you a second to type it in there. What's the first thing that we ask, y'all? Let me hear it. The first thing we ask is that you share your name. And you share where you're watching from. So Steve's already told his name, and he's watching from. What city are you in again? I'm at uh, Sky City Casino, which is right outside of Grants. There you go. And uh, uh, we we found this place because it's got you know it's got a, a tower right here. We got a lot of bars, so we got a lot of power. I'm sitting here in my Dodge pickup truck. So Steve's broadcasting from Sky City Casino outside of Grants, New Mexico, and. Uh, uh -huh. I am broadcasting from Chandler, Arizona, and where are y'all watching from? We've got Eileen from Nebraska, as always. Eileen, it's good to see you here. We've got Paul Abinson, uh, Adamson watching from uh, Kentucky. 95 degrees in Kentucky right now, he says. Can you imagine wow. that? Oh, my goodness. I'm 76 degrees here. Yeah, it's 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 been pretty nice today. It is uh, roll down the window and enjoy the weather time here in Arizona. We've got Sue from watching watching from Kingman, Arizona. We've got Marty from Shelbyville, Tennessee, and we've got questions. Steve, how about we get into the first question of the day? Fired up. I'm right. fired up. All right. So this one comes from Rebecca. Rebecca says, "My mule runs barefoot, and maybe that's part of the problem, but his front feet." His heels turn in and under. One farrier said yeah. to cut the bar out and to cut the heel down, down almost to the blood. But he's mostly a horseman. But he's been doing this for years. He's very sweet, mule, no kick uh, or bite. All loving six-year-olds, we have a time with his feet. What do you have to say there? You know, that sure hit the nail right on the head. Here's the problem, folks. Don't listen to these people who says you don't need shoes. Contracted heels... It's going to cripple your animals. Contract the heels. Now, if them heels are so turned under, oh, my goodness. I mean, that's the problem, folks, is the back quarters. That means from the half, from the quarters back are curling under. That means you hardly got any frog. And if you don't have a frog, guess what you don't have? Blood going up and down the legs. Now, remember, uh, I told you about I got one of my clients. Um, he, he videoed all that stuff. Dave's got all that information. We're going to start seeing it on YouTube, and we're going to start seeing end result. Your sure, ma'am, is right. You've got to cut the quarters out, uh, I mean uh, the, the bars, because the bars are what's holding the back of the hoof in, the back of the hoof in. 
Folks, put shoes on your mules. Are you going to end up with a crippled animal? You can have one to walk so much more better. Now, this is what I want you all to do. If you don't listen to me, do it this way. For the next two weeks, I want you to walk on your tippy toes and tell me how that feels. That's what it is. They're literally walking on their tippy toes. That's what they're doing. And they're, you're crippling your mule, folks. So, so hey, ma'am, take pictures, please, and let us know how you're doing. And your farrier is right. There we go. All right, we've got uh, Marty from Shelbyville, Tennessee. Said hi to Marty. We've got Astra from Stillwell, uh, Oklahoma. We've got Dan watching from San Augustine, Texas. We've got Karen from Sunny 77, Raymond, California. Karen, sounds awesome. We've got Deborah from uh, Cortland, Ohio, over on YouTube. We've got uh, Travis in South Carolina, and we've got Mark Williams out in Virginia. So we got all the gang here. The band is back together, and we've got another question. Folks, make sure you do put your questions in the comment section so we can get to them. Uh, next question, this one was emailed in. This is about chasing some goats. Steve, I'm going to ask you a question about chasing goats. You ready? Yeah, go. All right. I can Kenny, tell you the answer already, but go yeah, ahead. Kenny says... How are you, buddy? I hope all is well. Hoping to make it to a clinic soon. I've got a mule problem. He's a nine-year-old jack mule. He's been used a fair amount, just not lately. I haven't saddled him in a few months. He has started chasing the goats in his pasture. He will catch yep. one and kind of kneel down on his front legs and mouth the goat. He will yep. pick it up and hold it and then drop it. Yes. It's not a range yes. or even an angry th rage or angry thing, I don't think. It's one nanny goat and I saw him chasing the billy. Nanny goat chasing the billy. I don't know if it's possibly he hears her bleeding when the billy is trying no. to breed her or what. Sorry about droning on, but I sure could use a little savvy here. Thanks in advance, Kenny. Yeah, folks, don't put your donkey, I mean your, your sheep, or your goats or your calves in with a mule. Don't do it. Okay, you think this is plain? This ain't plain. This is the very beginning of killing that goat. And I don't know if any of y'all saw it 10 years ago where there was a, a mountain lion and this mule had this mountain lion in his teeth and was shaking it all around. Well, the end result of that was that was, that was an actual lion hunt and the, the, lion, the lion was already dead, but the mule was, was supposed to be ground tied and walked upon the lion and he attacked the lion, picked it up, threw it away. Listen, what's going to happen to that goat? You're going to come out there one day and he's dead. Get the goat, folks. And that's another thing. Don't put him out in the pasture. Why put him on a smorgasbord? Put him in an individual stall where you can feed him and water him accordingly. You know, you're not feeding for beef, you know. Yep. So I can keep on going, Dave. I, you know, it, it, it can be pretty bad. Yeah, we've talked about that multiple times. We've talked about that. Folks have had the same concerns with the dogs, right? The mule just seems to want yep. to go after the dog. What can I do? And really, the solution that you talk about every time is get them away from each other. It's just going to happen. Yep. That's just what happens. It's natural. Look, folks, when it's natural... There's not always a way to fix it unless it's like a runaway or it, it, all that stuff is natural, but you can do that with a bit. But when it comes down to to uh, to protection, these mules have the donkey side and they will get it. I don't know if any of you ever seen on YouTube, but you see these Brazilians, uh, they got a calf down and they're working the calf and the mule is keeping the cow away. Folks, that's using a mule naturally. That calf, this mule is mothering up to that calf. Even though the cowboy is holding the calf on the ground, what it is is this mule is thinking, all right, I got me something to take care of, mother up to, and that's what it'll do. You know, folks, there's, a, there's so much more to being around the mule, folks, than you could possibly imagine. But get your, get your mule away from that livestock, you know, and don't, don't say to yourself, Gosh, I've been doing 25 years. I've been fine. No, no. The day's going to come where they'll stomp them to death. So another thing that uh, kind of goes along the same way, not just for the animals, but in your clinics, when you get ready to, to do some corrective work, you'll say, all right, everyone, make sure you get to a get to a safe place, which is really no place at all. And you're constantly reminding people that 
these animals that they are dangerous. You can get yes. uh, you can get killed. Uh, you can get put in the hospital. As a matter of fact, tell me your rap sheet on uh, broken bones and whatnot, because you've got quite the elaborate rap sheet. Oh my goodness, thirty-two broken bones and two replaced hips. And that was my younger days when I thought, you know, you think you're a good cowboy. Well, I'm going to be just a little bit more better in my prideful situation. But you're always trying to be a little bit better on these outfits. And, and you can get yourself hurt pretty bad. You know, a lot of broken ribs. Oh, golly, a lot of broken ribs. But, uh, but that wasn't from being, that wasn't from petting Fluffy. That was taking Grumpy and, and blindfolding him up. And, and hobbling down and climbing on him when I was stupid, you know? Yeah. yeah. Lots of learning to do. Lots of lessons to keep learning. And uh, that's why we broadcast every single week. Folks, make sure you put your comments in the comment section. Uh, any questions you got, we want to make sure to get to them today. Uh, a few more welcomes here. We've got Cindy from Brundage, uh, Alabama. We've got Sherry from Jasper, Georgia. We've got Kathy from Cotati, California. Linda from rural central Ohio with her mule, Theo. Theo, how you doing? It's good to, good to have you here. Live and in that? person. Uh, let's see. We've got David Pengelly. Coffee by David. Coffee, man. Come along, yeah. coffee, ask, tell, demand. You want it, you can get it. I will put a link in the comment section. It is fantastic. David, it's really good to have you here. He says, I should get to ring the bell in Sonoya, Georgia, because it's really hot out here. Well, here you go, David. The bell's being rung for you. We got you covered here. We don't leave anyone uh, anyone stranded there. All right, next question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Noel is here. Uh, hey, Steve and Dave, getting colder here in Ontario, Oregon. I'll bet it is. It's going to get pretty chilly there here pretty quick. Uh, we've got David from uh, Port Angeles, uh, Washington. Good to have you here, David. Always great to have you. Uh, Deborah says, Steve, I got a 20-year-old mule that bucks randomly. How can I fix this? Okay, number one, if a mule's bucking, he's got a reason. He's being hurt somehow or another all right now and he's also 20 years old so he flat knows what he's doing so how can this occur people are using horse saddles it's banging on the scapula they only use one cinch so it's restricting the working area and so the mule's got such a sore back that he's trying to find a way to get rid of the problem now it can be that man you rode this mule three days and he's doing good perfect and then you're riding him on the fourth day, you're a half an hour down the road, and he bucks you off. All of a sudden, you guys know what it's like to have back pain. You know what it's like. Well, all of a sudden, that's what happens. So going back to this, uh, first thing I would do is make sure you get your teeth done. Because what, remember what happens with the shelf, the upper shelf and the lower shelf. When that lower shelf drops, that the TMJs hang up, scares the mule, hurts the mule, Okay, so it takes care of the dental problem. Get your dentist work done first. Next thing that you make sure you do, go to a chiropractor. And listen, folks, there are some quacks out there. <laughs> the quacks, just like anything else, all right? <laughs> but, but find a good one and find the problem, you know? You cannot believe the difference because what's happened is there's a lot of times these mules, because you only use one cinch, you knock out the sixth and seventh rib. Well, look, all the mule is trying to do is trying to protect himself. All the mule is trying to do is to get comfortable. You know, so I, I was talking to a guy today. He had a particular saddle and he was having some problems. And I said, uh, you know, those three uh, spine on the back. And I said, go look at your saddle. Number one, you're using a wool pad. He says, you're right. And I said, number two, you're using a saddle that's either sewed up in the back or... Uh, the, uh, the the back of the saddle is too close and it's rubby. And he says, you hit all three of them right, Steve. So there it is, folks. I, he never even told me. I just told him where it was coming from. So uh, it's, it's a bugger to do. But you're going to, if a mule's bucking, it's because he's hurt. 
So um, a question right here, Joe Williams, or actually not a question, a comment that's pretty timely. Uh, Joe said, hey, Steve, you gave me some advice on the phone a few months ago. I bought your videos and they cured 90% of my mule issues. Thanks again from West Virginia. Do you ever give clinics out here? So Joe, thank you so much for the, the report back. We really appreciate that. And I'll speak for Steve and say you were the one who cured those problems. The videos just showed you what to do, but you were the one who got out there and actually cured the problems. And we love hearing reports like that because it gives hope to the rest of us that, hey, it doesn't have to be Steve there on the ground with the lead rope in hand. Anybody can do it if you go out there and you know what to look for and you're willing to, to be humble about it and follow some instruction. And, uh, and so we're really glad to hear that. Uh, and I'll talk to you real quick about the clinics. Uh, Steve won't say it, so I will. The best way to get Steve, if you want him at a clinic, the best way to get him there is to look at the clinics and the expos near your area, the ranches, the places that hold these events, and to call them up and say, we need Steve Edwards out here. There's a mule and donkey population growing. Owners are needing instruction. You need to call Steve Edwards and get them out here. And uh, and a good example is the Hoosier Festival. A couple weeks ago, we talked about this. You remember talking about this, Steve? Yep. Yes, yep. sir. Yeah. What happened was Hoosier Festival traditionally does not invite the same clinicians back week or uh, year back-to-back -back year. So usually there's some time between bringing them back. Well, they didn't have anybody from the, the mule community, the mule and donkey community, and you guys are the ones who called them up and said, no, like you need to have, you need to have these people represented and Steve's the one to do it. So they brought Steve back. So really the power is in, uh, is in your, uh, your wheelhouse. You've got the ability to get them coming out here. So if there's a, an event you want us to show up at, be sure and let us know, but call the organizers. Uh, Mark Williams says, I had a good ride a few weeks ago. I rode for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. We had a real good turnout. That's awesome, Mark. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, we've got Kimberly from Gilbert, Arizona watching. Kimberly, my neck of the woods, Steve's neck of the woods. We're glad to have you here. She asked the question, Steve, do you know of a good Chiro in the East Valley? Chiro? C-H-I-R-O? Chiro? Cairo. I mean, Chiropractor. Chiropractor. Oh, Cairo. I was gonna say, I was gonna say maybe she is talking Chiro, you know, like a Mexican oh. uh, cowboy, you know. I think it's but, chiropractor uh, in the East Valley. Do you know of anyone? Uh, I do, and uh, I'll tell you what, Dave, we'll have to hang on to her information. I'll have to go on my phone and give you that information, and then you can you can email it to her. Kimberly, let's do this the easiest way. Go ahead and send a text message to Steve. I'm going to put it in the uh, 602-999-6853. Uh, There's Steve's phone number. Y'all can call Steve anytime you want. You can send him text messages anytime you want. He will get back to you even if it's not right away. He's not going to get back to you right now. He's mine for the next uh, 45 <laughs> minutes here. But he'll get back to you. Uh, send him a message. Just let him know you want that chiropractor contact, and he'll get it for you. Uh, let's hop back over here to Facebook. Uh, make sure that we've got everybody a warm welcome. Uh, let's see. Susan has a question. I got a new Molly. Uh, is it a question or a comment? Let me read it. I got a new Molly that is super sensitive around her face, especially her muzzle. I had her teeth done uh, by my equine dentist a week ago, and... I noticed yesterday she is a little better, so I keep working on handling that face and rubbing uh, that muzzle. Is there anything else I can be doing to help with that? Also, she is very reactive on her right side, so I spend a lot of time on her right side when I am messing with her. Any tips would be appreciated. She is not ear shy. She made sure to capitalize not. So uh, sensitive around the face. Um, what could she be doing better and uh, reactive on the right side? What could she be doing better? Well, she's doing both things right. She says she's been going slow and rubbing the muscle and going slow and, and this sort of thing. And the reactive on the right hand side, folks, that happens all the time because folks don't train both sides. Look, even saddle from the right hand side. Put your saddle on from the right hand side. Do things like that. Start from the right hand side. Catch them from the right hand side. Uh, that you remember, they don't have the cranial lobe that tells the right side the left side's doing it, and the uh, right side the left side's doing it. So back and forth. So uh, yeah, it's imperative you keep staying wet right there with it. Once now, here's what I would do, Susan. Once you get the come along hitch on, and and get that going, approach the right hand side. When the feet move, which is the first 
steps of flight and fright. Bump the nose. Okay, but let's go even before that, even more. Folks, when the nose goes, so goes the feet. So, as we're starting to, if we're on our right hand side, which is the off side, is the proper uh, uh, technique for that. It's called off side. When you're in the off side and she goes to move her nose, bump her with the come along hitch. Make it uncomfortable because the nose controls the feet. And as soon as you get those feet to be quiet, with the come along hitch, not with the round pin, you'll get far more done in a quick time. Very good. Hopefully that's helpful, Susan. If you have any follow-up questions, be sure and let me know. We got the whole gang here on Facebook, Steve. I got all these people saying hello. Uh, so that was Susan. Linda says, Steve, hooray for replaced hips. Don't they work great? Mine does. Let people know they can still ride when they've healed. Ain't that the truth? Oh, man. Yeah, and, and by the way, my left hip got replaced four times because it got infected. Oh, that's I right. Was almost, uh, I was almost a mule trainer up there with my Heavenly Father for a while there. But I remember that. Now. Yeah. Now, that Susan, is that? Is that Callahan. Susan Callahan from, yep. uh, yeah, that's from Kingman. Yeah. Yep, yep. She's a police officer. That's at, right. Yeah, she's a police officer. And Susan, thank you very much for your service. Um, we've got Tracy McKinnon. G'day, Steve and Dave, Queensland, Australia. We got international. All right, very good. We're glad to have you here, Tracy. Uh, let's see, Deborah is calling back. She said, I think it's the random bucking problem is what she had said. She says, I do use a mule saddle and a Y cinch is what she had been saying. Yeah, well, the Y cinch is a big problem, folks. Don't be using no Y cinch. Why is that, that a problem? Well, because what's happening is it's pulling from both sides to the center. So it's almost like a center fire. Got it. And it puts the, it puts the pressure in the wrong place. So it's like this, coming from the back D-ring to the front D-ring, coming to the center. Folks, don't use that. That's a, what a packer designed for a pack saddle, which is completely different than your riding saddle. Completely different, okay? So your back cinch is the most important. And the problem is, People call them mule saddles, but let me ask this lady a question. The back uh, of the saddle, the back cinch, is it have a billet? In other words, about 12 inches of leather, okay? Or does it have ladder goes on it? Ask that question. All right, so there you go, Deborah. Let's hear from you. Um, we want to get this worked out, and this is one of our most favorite things to do. Uh, with Steve's Tack, without Steve's Tack, uh, we love solving problems, and the only way we get to those is by asking the questions step by step by step, and eventually we get to a place where it's, okay, that was the piece right there. So let's hear, uh, we'd love to hear back from you, Deborah, real quick. If you are just tuning in, which I know there are some of you who are, I get to see the stats here. So some of you are just hopping on. My name's Dave. Uh, this is Steve. Every Wednesday, we get together, talk mules and donkeys. We got some great people in the community here. I'd encourage you on Facebook to say hi to Eileen, uh, to Tracy, to David and Di, to David Cantors, to David Pengelly, to Linda, um, to Astra. She's here week after week. Uh, uh, to Susan, just all the folks in the Facebook community, I'd invite you to say hello to them. But more importantly, say hello to us. Let us know that you're here. Put your name in the comment section where you are watching from. Uh, Steve and I don't do these for me. I love I love hanging out with Steve. But if it were up to me, I'd be hanging out with Steve. You know, in person at a sports grill, having a hamburger talking about life. We love coming and doing this with you. So we want to hear from yes. you. And uh, and there's just something good in this new technology age to just say yeah. hello and to just let yeah. folks know, hey, I see you. I know that you're here and I'm grateful to be hanging out with you. So put your name, where you're watching from in the comment section. The number two thing is you ask any and every question that you got. Uh, don't, be, don't be shy. Don't be uh, bashful. Put your question in the comment section. We will ask it. Uh, we are all learning here together. Steve may have more experience than us in some areas, uh, but he is continuing to learn, and he's always picking up new things uh, and always talking. Matter of fact, we were down at the Andrada Ranch, and you and Randy were talking, and I know Randy kind of has some ways that he does things. You have ways that you do things, and it's that biblical principle of iron sharpens iron, and so we continue to learn and grow. So ask your question. The third thing, Put your uh, or share this broadcast 
with friends and with family, especially if you're on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and tag someone who's in the equine community with you and just let them know that you can come and uh, they can come and hang out with us and spend some time with us. Uh, let's see here. We've got, um, let me get back here. Um, uh, Taylor. Uh, Taylor's here and says, Taylor's new. We uh, I think last week was the first time Taylor hung out with us. Is there a link to a video on how to adjust the halter Taylor? Yes, we have several. And I will give you the link to the one that I think is the best. Uh, if you want to keep looking, you can find them on YouTube, uh, Steve's channel, but I'll send you a link to the one that's the best. Uh, next here, this one's from Sherry. Sherry says, I have a normally very forward mule that likes to go down the trail, but lately he's been balky, taking the lead on occasion. I Balking taking yeah. the lead on occasion. I can get to eventually move on, but it requires some reinforcement with a crop or making him work circles to get him to go forward. I know it's not a fear factor. Is it possible he is getting buddy sour with his riding buddies or maybe just wanting to be the leader? Thanks for any insights, Sherry. Okay, number one, folks. Don't do the horse thing and go in circles. It don't work. I ask people all the time, how's that working for you? And if it doesn't work, folks, after two times, don't do it no more. Because what's going to happen is you're going to end up with problems. So go in circles, don't work. Right brain, left brain with your hands, that's what works with a snaffle bit in your hands. All right? That's that part. Now, let's go back. If we got a mule that normally is forward moving, and we got a mule that is kind of sucking back a little bit, then then there's some reasons here. It could be a buddy sour problem, maybe. If so, use your legs, right, left, right, left, not both at the same time, right brain, left brain, right brain, left brain, and use a snaffle bit, because a snaffle bit is what you train on. All right, now, next part, okay? It could very well be, now is this, are we riding out from the house? Are we riding out from camp or what it is? And is it the first is it the first 30 minutes or is it two hours down the road? Now, the only reason I say that is if I've got some time frames, then I'd be able to give you an idea kind of what could be the problem, okay? All right. Uh, let's see here. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll keep cruising while we're waiting. Uh, Tracy uh, from uh, Lake Como, Pennsylvania says, uh, better late than never. Tracy could not agree more with you. I love that. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, Nicole says, Steve, if you if mules grow until they're around seven, then why are most people around here selling broke trained mules that are two or three? Also, uh, does riding bareback hurt their back? Bear, riding bareback does not hurt their back. You only ride them for just a short time. Okay. There's nothing wrong with selling a mule at three years old. Yes, he's got four more years to go, but here's three years. If there's a three-year-old that has a super good foundation and uh, and this sort of thing, guess what? He doesn't have 10 years of baggage. Folks want a 12-year-old mule, all right? Why? Huh? Why would somebody be selling a good 12-year-old mule? Because I'll tell you why. He's got a lot of baggage. He's got a lot of problems. And, we, and goes to this person, to that person, to that person. Nothing wrong with buying a good three-year-old. Now, two-year-old, I'd be a little concerned. Uh, it depends on the riding. It, anytime you do something like this, folks, you buy uh, a meal, always take him to vet. Look at the cartilage in the knees. See if that's been a problem. And, and, and have them x-ray the legs. Make sure we have no ring bone. But just think about this. A three-year-old doesn't have the baggage that a 12-year-old does. And what I mean by baggage, wrong problems, because the mule is just fine until somebody opens the gate. And then we start developing bad habits and bad problems. Um, so uh, I put a comment, uh, a link in the comment section to a previous video we did where Steve talks more in depth on the topic of should I buy a young mule? or an experienced mule. So if that's something that you'd like to know more about, that link is in the comments section there. Uh, I'd highly encourage you to go check it out. It's a really good video, real short to the point, 
um, and answers the question. Uh, over on YouTube, we've got Jerry from Benson, Arizona watching. Jerry, it's good to have you here. Uh, Jim yeah. from Alabama watching. We're grateful you're here too, Jim. And uh, Kimberly comes back with another question. She says, what do you feed your mules? Bermuda, alfalfa, any pellet fuel, uh, pellet food? More specifically, for the six-month-old John mule, what should I feed him? Well, if you go to my article on mules can't stand prosperity, you'll see how uh, some uh, a lady that I trained a young mule for how it went bad because uh, they started feeding it the wrong feed. Yep. And so you can go. Okay. So that uh, was just my wife saying she's going to go across the street. She's been hiking around while I've been here on do my radio station. Anyway, let's do this stuff. So. What do you feed a young mule? Um, I personally, I feed nothing but pellets. Uh, you're in Arizona, so you can buy Lake and Light, L-A-K-I-N, L-I-T-E. I was instrumental in developing that feed. It has vitamins and minerals, everything that you need. Okay, um, and yes, if you want to feed a little grass hay, you can, but you don't need to. Here's the thing with the pellets is once you start chewing on them, and once they start adding water, they become three times their size. And when they come, become three times their size, it's just, just like us, folks. You know, if we go to a smorgasbord, we keep packing the food away, we don't find that fine line. But if we eat just so much and set weight, you'll, you'll do fine, far better. So your young ones, uh, I basically keep pellets in front of them all the time. You know, no. So that's what I would do. All right. I put uh, two links in the comment section. First link is to Steve's article, Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. Great article. Uh, second link is to a video that uh, Steve recorded with uh, with someone uh, named uh, Jim Waterford who had worked for Lake and Light for a long time, a uh, long time associate of Steve's. And they talked for about 30, 40 minutes just about feed, nutrition, mules, donkeys, uh, equine in general, talk about programs. One of the things that uh, Steve has said on this program uh, often is that each mule needs their own program according to their specific dietary needs, but also according to their usage, how you plan on using them. If you're going to do a lot of hiking, you want to give a lot of riding, you're going to give one type of feed. If you're not going to be using the mule very much, you want to give another type of feed or another type of program uh, because as you'll see in the nutrition article, uh, it's like rocket fuel for these animals. If you give them all these carbohydrates and soup them all up and then don't go ride them or work them, uh, they're, they're just going to... they're. It's, it's going to be like lighting a firecracker. Um, so make sure you go check out uh, those articles. And if you haven't gotten Steve's video, the Feed Talk video, uh, get that as well. It's free. Um, all we do is we just ask to get your uh, email address because we like following up with you. Um, let's see here. Susan says, Tony Steele is an excellent chiropractor, lives in Nevada, and he's on my friends list. So there you go. Uh, if anybody's looking for a chiro uh, in the Nevada area, that sa uh, southwest U.S., uh, go check out Susan's friends list. You can find Tony Steele. Uh, Linda says, I have an acquaintance, a horse person, who says to me, oh, Steve always says it's your fault, not the mule's fault. How do I tell the difference between a mule who is just showing you bad attitude and a mule who is trying to protect himself from your mistake that's hurting him? That's a good question. I like that question. We haven't had that one. Good, good job, Linda. Steve, what do you say? Okay, so here we go, folks. W when is it your fault? When you see the mule's head coming up in the air, that means you got too much pressure either on the reins or on the lead rope, like this, okay? The head should always be down, the nose be on a vertical, and the mule balance. When you take it out of that frame, that is not the mule, that is you doing that, all right? Now, let's take another. People are telling me, okay, I've got a hard-to-catch mule. You know how they get hard to catch? Because you approach the nose and not the shoulder. You always approach the shoulder. That's your neutral zone, okay? Even if the mule comes walking up to you, always go to the shoulder. Don't be petting on the face. Eventually, I've seen them just take off running as soon as they get close. And here's the problem, folks, is that, let's just say, 
you you walk out to catch your meal, and the meal is just standing there, and all of a sudden looks over towards you. Okay, he says, now, since he's looking at you, he's saying, okay, business hours are open. You know, it's, you know, invitations open, come on and visit with me. Okay, so visiting hours are on. He's looking at you. As soon as he looks away, he's saying, visitation is over. And what we tend to do is keep right on going. Don't do that. Stop right where you are, move a little bit to the right, and the mule will turn and look at you. And when he does, then approach. You've got to remember, folks, he looks at you as the herd leader. And as soon as you keep right on going, he's going to look at you saying, wait a minute. I, I thought I told you that I was not uh, the 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 uh, business hours were closed because I looked the other way. All right. Here's the problem. When they start looking the other way like this and you're still coming, you basically tell them to leave. It's what you tell them to do. OK, again, it's not their fault. It's your fault because you're the herd leader and you keep on coming toward the head. And then they leave. Well, now you've got one's hard to catch. The approach the shoulder. The nose says three things. Whoa, come to me, go away from me. That's what the nose does. Okay? Now, there's also one more that has to back up, but that's later on down the road. The shoulder is neutral. Stand still and quiet. Here I come. Where do you see two buddies be together? Each of them are nibbling on each other's shoulders, and they're happy and, 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 and enjoying each other. You approach the hip, you leave. That's just an example. That's just a couple of examples of what to look for when it's your fault, when it's not the mule's fault. All right. Good question there, Linda. Um, let's see. We've got, hey, here we go. Uh, David Shaw, I, Steve, and Dave from Dan Under. Starting to warm up here. Now reach 100 Fahrenheit. Monday. International, we're we're in Australia again. There, good to have you, David. Uh, good to good to see you guys here. Uh, Steve got me a cowboy hat. It's not an Aussie cowboy hat, but he got me a my first cowboy hat. I was supposed to wear it today, and doggone it, I forgot it at home. I had to leave. I was out of my routine. Usually, see, I kind of wake up, I uh, mosey around the house. The kids get ready for have the day. Some coffee. Have some come along coffee. That's right. I enjoy just being around. Well, this morning I had a meeting about 45 minutes away with traffic. It could be even longer. So I had to get out of the house real quick. As soon as I got here, got the computer set up, started broadcasting. So I was out of my routine. So I'll have to bring it next week. Uh, we've got Barbara Jean Riley says, I come from California uh, to uh, the Boyd Ranch ride. Will you be presenting there next year? Steve, are you familiar with the Boyd Ranch ride? I am. And I was supposed to present it there one year. And that was when my hip got infected That's and right. I had a problem. I would love to get with the Boyd Ranch again. Maybe they'll give me an invite, and uh, and I'll come back over there and and do some training and talk with folks. It's a it's a fun venue. Uh, they they do a lot of riding uh, in that country, and it's sure nice. But yeah, I should I should probably uh, hopefully I'll hear from them this year. Is that Maybe the one out in Wickenburg? Yes. All right. I'm gonna put a link. Uh, let's see here. Tell Boyd. Ranch to bring Steve Edwards back to bring Steve Edwards there. Let's see. All right, y'all can go to uh, y'all can go to that uh, link I just put there and let them know if you like Steve. There you go. Uh, all right, let's keep moving on here. Next question. This one is uh, emailed in from Sam. Sam says, "My two-year-old donkey, I love, but she has gotten so pushy." That when I go to feed other chickens, she wants their feed. She almost knocked me over. I popped on the nose and she backed up. Same thing today, except I had to pop three times on the nose. But is this going to make her hate me? She usually follows me everywhere. She halt, she halters, loads, feet trimmed, only because uh, I feed crimped oats while she's he's trimming her. I ordered foundation training. Is there something else I should do with her? Thank you, Sam. Okay, folks, don't smack them in the head, okay? All it's going to do is make them head shy. Take your foot and tap them against the shin, and that makes them uncomfortable. Or if you can do it beforehand, kick some dirt at them. Uh, I, I did, a, I did a, a safety program in Minnesota for the Minnesota Zoo where they had a couple of uh, uh, big draft horses there. And the draft horses, when you go to feed them, 
they would muck out the uh, handlers left and right, step on them, break legs. They've done all kinds of stuff. And I showed them how I was shaking the feet and say, come on, come on, shaking the feet. And everybody's thinking, man, them horses are going to muck that little short fat guy out, you know. And here they come, coming in on top of me. All of a sudden, they're coming within 15 feet of me, and I kick some dirt toward them with my shoes. They stopped to look at the dirt thinking, why'd that dirt move, you know? And they started to come at me again. I kicked some dirt at them. They stopped right there. I put the feet in, I, and I turned around and walked away. So, kick some dirt at them first. If they're already in your space, which you should not have let them do that, that's your fault. There's an example of your fault. Perfect good one. Do not, then not, look, these equine, you can come into their space. They are not allowed to come into your space. But you can go into their space because you are the herd leader, period. So if they're in your space already, they're trying to take over leadership, and it can hurt. So what I'll see you do often, Steve, kind of what you're talking about, kick at the shins, uh, get them to back up. If you've got them on a lead rope with the come along with a properly adjusted rope halter, um, a lot of times what I'll see you do is it not even that much, just wiggle a little bit, and that's just enough yeah. pressure right here to get them to back up. They understand yeah. that. If it's if it's up here, it doesn't do anything to them. This is, I mean, just yeah. it's all bone, and so they don't feel anything yeah. right here. It's not about uh, you know pain coercion it's about communicating where they listen and it'll yep. it, i've seen it it'll be harder for them to understand at first but then they'll see you it'll get to a point where they'll see you move a little bit this way and they don't move because they don't want you to wiggle that rope and if you yep. want them to come then you cue them to come and then they'll follow you and then you stop Very and good. they'll know to stop because if you don't, if they don't stop, you'll wiggle that rope, and it's it's sensitive there, and it's not even that much. It's just, but yeah. it's enough to get them to listen. Am I am I am I recalling all of that correctly, Steve? Yeah, you, you got it right there. You know, a lot of times I'll I'll be tying one up in a trailer, and they'll get they'll get me pushing on me. Well, I won't slap them on the head. I've already been starting to tie. I'll kick them with the side of my boot, right in the shin, you know, or I'm tying to a hitching post. And they come in too close to rub on me. Well, I kick them in the shin. Well, there's also a possibility if I've got one too close when I go to get them and I didn't watch them and I, they're that close, kick them in the shin. Do not slap them in the head. Okay? Very good. There we go. All right. We've got Albert from Arkansas watching. Albert, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for tuning in over on YouTube. We've got Kathy from Oklahoma. Kathy, it's great to have you. Really appreciate you taking some time today. Hang out with us. Uh, th there's one thing you can't make more of, and that's time. And so we're glad that you're here right. spending some of yours with us. Uh, let's see here. We've got another question from Nicole. She says, so when training a young mule... When can you start training the mount and light riding? When their knees are closed. Go to a veterinarian when they're around two years and six months. Have them sonogram or x-ray the front knees. And when the cartilages are closed and his knees are right, then you can look at start doing some light riding and some, or some weight on a, like I say, maybe... Even a saddle folk sometimes can be too much and lead them around. So uh, usually two years and six months is a good average. But as soon as your veterinarian says, okay, the cartridges are closed, start riding. Uh, next question. This is a follow-up to Sherry. So Sherry's original question was, normally very forward mule likes to go down the trail. Lately he's been uh, balking at taking the lead rope on occasion. Um, I can get him eventually move on. I know it's not fear factor, buddy sour. So here's her follow-up question. She says, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to when he does it. For example, he may be leading and then we stop for a break and then he refuses to lead again. We will even keep backing up as I try to urge him forward. Then if he's yep. behind someone else, we will be right on their flank like he wants to pass. Sometimes he will, uh, other time, sometimes he will, other times he won't. Sometimes he will throw a tantrum and kick out his rear legs when annoyed. Uh, not, not we will, but we will back up to try to get him to go on. Uh, we don't we back go. up. He will start backing up. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's right. Okay, there we are. Hear that? He will kick out his back legs when he's annoyed. 
That's called a kick out, all right? And that a lot of times is because the saddle is sitting on top of the scapula. And so the mule is uncomfortable. So you, you might want to ask, are you riding one cinch or two cinches? And are you riding a britching? Okay, because for some reason or another, you see, they can be standing. And, oh, man, the saddle feels pretty good. It was just starting to hurt. Anyway, so then all of a sudden they go to moving and it goes to banging on the scapula again. They don't want to go forward because they figure that forward motion is painful. And so therefore they start laying back. I can't, I still remember when I first started running into that, they just wouldn't get forward. I'm thinking, why? Well, the saddle was banging on a scapula, you know, and that had a lot to do with it. But, okay, so the question is asked, are you riding a breeching? Are you have a back cinch on? And let me just give you one more uh, for the fun of it here. What kind of bit? So while we're waiting for that answer there, we want to get this worked out. And this is a really great uh, example of how we're able to do this uh, through the phone, through the internet, through email, through text messages. Uh, while we're waiting to hear from Sherry, I want to let you all know that in the comment section, I put a link to something called the Mule Saddle Training Course. Now, this is something I told Steve, Steve, we need to have this. So one thing that makes the dynamic with me and Steve work really well, first and foremost, we're brothers in Christ and we've got that in common. But aside from that, I know nothing about mules. He's been working with them about as long as I've been alive, if not longer. Um, so I can ask questions and I'm, I'm not afraid to ask a question that I think might be a, a, a question that anybody should know. So I'll ask a question and Steve will say, okay, good question. And he'll answer that question. And a lot of times it winds up being a question that other people were thinking too. So that's kind of why what we do works. Well, I had been talking to Steve. We talk on the phone all throughout the week. And I had been talking to him and I said, hey, Steve, um, with the saddles, do we have anything that shows people how to put everything together? He goes, well, I've got a saddle training video that I give people when they order a brand new saddle and it shows them how to set up the saddle. I said, yes, yes, yes. But I'm learning and I'm picking up here that all of the pieces work together. Like it sounds like you can have just the saddle, a Steve Edwards saddle, because it has the bars that put all of the support in the right, or get the support from the right places, but you could still have a mistake with the cinch, or you could be using whatever it is you call like a pulling collar or something. And so it seems to me like there's more to it. And he goes, well, yeah, there is. I said, okay, here's what I want to do. Let me know if you're okay with this. And he goes, okay. I said, I want to create a course that's all about training people how to get the saddle to fit properly all together from the front to the back. He says, well, do you think that's a good idea? I said, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think folks would enjoy that. That's what I just put a link to in the comment section. It is the Mule Saddle Training Course. And it's Steve going through over 13 videos, some as long as 29 minutes, some as short as 90 seconds going through wow. piece by piece by piece, telling you how it all fits together. So the stuff we're talking about right now with Sherry, it's talked about in the mule saddle training course as far as it goes with tacking things up. So I wanted to make sure that you all knew where that was coming from. It's not just a thing we threw together. There was a lot of thought behind it. Uh, Joe Williams says the come along hitch has changed my ranch. It's seriously that good on mules and horses. So that's a great report. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Uh, Jerry says, do you know what happened to AZ Mule Day? Steve, do you know what happened? I think they were doing it and it just, it, it, they weren't able to do it again or something like that. There was something that came up, I think. The AZ Mule Days? Yeah, yeah I'm not really sure. You know, I started uh, a Mule Days back in the 90s and then, and then here just about five years ago, another guy started it up. And um, uh, I just think there probably wasn't enough support behind it. I don't know exactly. I, I sat on the first board with them, and we were going to give the money to kids, to a kid's camp, to put the kids in the camp. And, and just um, we just, make a long story short, really didn't make enough money to even meet the bills that we had to pay for for renting things so yeah we just need more support on something like well, that. maybe it's a, a case of good idea great cause not the right time yet maybe we'll do something in the future build up this there thing you on youtube here get everyone to come out that i think that would be pretty cool do a big there plan meetup that'd be pretty awesome uh let's yeah. see here we've got uh susan from uh west pennsylvania 
Uh, we've got uh, Jarrett. Any tips for teaching speed control while under the saddle? Trying to get a mule to walk faster or slower on the trail. Thank yeah. you. All right. So, Jarrett, you pick out a place, and like right now, I'm looking at a water tank. And I'm going to head straight toward that water tank. I am going to be riding in a snap a bit, preferably my mule rider's martingale, which will give you really good communication. So with my hands in direct reining position, okay, 12 inches apart, 13 inches apart, my hands are going to go right, left, right, left. Anytime, folks, the mule is doing something you don't want, go right, left, right, left. That immediately tells them wrong idea. So it says right brain, listen to me, left brain, listen to me. So with we're going to do speed. So as we're going along and we got our reins up and we got them ready, we're going to use our right leg and our left leg. So as we're going down from here, looking at that straight place straight ahead, we're going to go right, left, right, left. And when a mule starts getting at, at the, a speed that's faster than what he was doing before, I quit using my legs. Now hear, hear me now. Don't use both legs at the same time. Go right, left, right, left. Do it that way. You've got your hands ready so that if the mule starts to go too fast, right, left, right, left, okay? Then he starts to go too slow, increase the intensity of your legs. Increase the intensity. And always ask for a little bit at a time. So if this mule will go a little bit faster without you putting your leg on it the first time, let him go so much, and then turn him off to the right or to the left, and then next day do it again. Everything three six nine twelve so when when you go and and you go right or left in other words you get away from going straight bring them back again and go straight again once they pick up the speed and they're at the speed that you want and just before they start to slow down take them off to the left take them off to the right and then take them back to center again you're going to do that three times three six nine twelve pretty soon you'll get to the point where the meal is walking the speed that you want Awesome. Very good. All right, let's keep moving on here. We got good questions. Real quick, if you are just tuning in, my name is Dave. This is Steve. We're glad that you're here. Uh, go ahead. Let us know that you're watching, name, and where you're watching from in the comments section. Steve's out in New Mexico. I'm out in Arizona. And then we got people all around the world. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so we're glad you're here. Second, go ahead. Ask any questions that you have. We've got about eight minutes left here uh, until the bottom of the hour, and then we will uh, bid adieu until next week. And then the third thing is please share Queen Valley Mule Ranch, whether it's this broadcast or uh, the page itself, please share uh, with your other equine friends, family members, community. Uh, we want to make sure that folks know that there is a resource out there uh, for correcting mule and donkey owner problems, right? We start with, yep. it's a, you know, we're correcting the mule problems, but really not. It's about training you. Uh, and, and that's a great thing because it just shows what influence you have over the, the animal and that you really do have the ability to be in control, to become that herd leader. Uh, it's not you out of control and just the lot you're dealt is the lot you're dealt. No, we've all got room to grow. We've all got room to improve. Uh, we've got Celeste watching from Florida. Glad to have you here, Celeste. We've got Yolanda from the Netherlands. We've gone international hey. again. Uh, we've got, yep. uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Linda says, Steve, thank you so much. This is so helpful. Uh, Yolanda says, what about spade cricket bits or cricket bits with the tongue space? I've never heard of cricket. I've heard of crickets. I've heard of bits. I've heard of spades. I've never heard of spade cricket bits or cricket bits with tongue space. What's a cricket bit? Okay, so the cricket bit basically is the port in the middle that whisks the roof of the mouth, and it's solid. And then you have one that is open, kind of like a Mona Lisa-looking uh, position, where they can get their tongue up in there. I, I personally prefer to, to use a correctional mouthpiece, uh, and uh, you can see those bits on my website. And those correctional mouthpieces give you tongue relief, and you've got to have tongue relief. Folks, once these mules are three years old, they should be out of a snaffle bit and into a correctional mouthpiece, which gives tongue relief, and all the communication comes from the palate, corners of the mouth, and the bars. So uh, that's the idea. One is solid, 
The other one is open. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. Uh, Neil Campbell from Wet Soggy Peshtigo, Wisconsin. We're glad that you're here again this week, Neil. It's great to have you. Celeste says, I have a 15-year-old John Mule. I purchased apps uh, 21 and a half or two and a half months ago. Tw yeah, tw two and a half months ago. Uh, took him to the vet for shots and four times he got away from them when he, the vet left a needle in him from startling him. Ever since then, he runs away, hard to catch, and now when you get him uh, and out a lead rope uh, on, he bolts, run away, uh, went to the mountains this past weekend, and twice got away and ran for the woods. Took quite a few of us to catch him, even with a lead rope and 25-foot lunge on him, uh, line on him. I don't know how to get his trust back or keep him from bolting. He's like a bulldozer. Uh, Steve. <laughs> yeah, boy, come along hitch, come along hitch. That's the way you got to do it, folks. Look, that come along hitch, if you watch my videos, you'll see me using that come along hitch for all kinds of stuff. The ground communication kit that Dave is, what I would suggest to her, that kit, folks, shows, shows a, a buckaroo cowboy in Montana. It shows one that his ear is cut. He's had all kinds of problems. He drug him behind a pickup truck, and end result, uh, he's able to work with the mule. So that come along rope is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Now, the next thing now, now that the doctor has left a needle in, which is no big deal, ain't no big deal, all right? Uh, it, but we make it a big deal. Start using the twitch and creating natural endorphins anytime. I'm doing any doctor work. I don't use the drugs, folks. I don't use them. I use natural endorphins coming from my nose twitch, you know. And we got some video I think we got on that day yep. uh, where we had this one mule that you could see at first. My apprentice was trying to put some stuff in the eye, and the mule was throwing his head. We used the, the, the twitch with the natural endorphins. We got the mule quiet was able to put that stuff in the eye, no problem. I have castorated, I have stitched, I've done a little bit of everything, folks, using that twitch. I train all of my mules to a twitch, all of my mules to the come along hitch. Get the come along hitch and get the video, get the communication kit. That right there will change everything. I think just about everybody that's listening to me now, a good portion of them have used my come along hitch and like the one guy said, he changed his ranch. Yep. You know, uh, period. So, folks, get away from those misadjusted halters. Get away from the nylon halters. And and start communicating to the mule. Again, this is your fault. This is not the mule's fault. It's the veterinarian's fault because, again, they don't have the knowledge of the mule. They don't have the knowledge of the donkeys. And, and they don't teach it in vet school. I can't tell you how many veterinarians, Dave, have told me, says, man, <laughs> if we'd only learned this in vet school, we'd probably even be better vets from working on the horses. The come along hitch will change everything, everything. A lot of folks, they'll say, um, they'll look at something like the humane twitch. Uh, they'll look at something like the way the come along hitch is, um, and they will filter it through their communication and they'll filter it through their understanding and uh, you know a lot of times folks just they, they haven't been taught they haven't learned and uh, and one of the things we really encourage folks to do here by you know just by virtue of having this is to respect the mule and the donkey as a unique uh, part of creation uh, to give yep. them the respect that they deserve don't just throw them into the family of equine and say all equine are equine and uh, what you're doing to that mule is wrong. Uh, a lot of times, what happens, and, and and we, you know, softly correct, and we and we have a conversation about it. Uh, but what a lot of times, what will happen is someone will take their understanding of what they've learned, uh, and they will apply it incorrectly and unjustly to the mule and the donkey. And with the best of intentions, they wind up ruining perfectly good animals. We hear those stories. I haven't seen that part. Steve has seen that part. But I read the stories of what comes in, and I read the stories of people who have animals who are as good as gone, 
uh, as far as training goes, and the come along hitch and the training that they see and find on the Mule Ranch website, uh, just like John said, it, it changes. It changes them. And they go from having an animal uh, that wasn't being respected, and it wasn't because they didn't want to respect it, it's because they thought they were. But, the, he, but the, yeah. the reality is the mule and the donkey, what we learn, are different. And so to treat them like a horse is to disrespect them. To treat them as a mule or donkey in their uniqueness is to respect them. Uh, just a few reviews here on the come along hitch so you guys can hear it. Uh, Jana says, this is, how, this is now known as the magic rope. You can trust Steve Edwards. He has never let me down when it comes to the mules. He has all of the answers. Um, we've got a, a comment from uh, Susan. This is the most valuable item for working with your mule you'll ever, ever own. You can take it out of any rope uh, and uh, it'll work, but but Steve's is perfect and it works best. Bruce says, ordered and received my come along rope a month ago. Very fast shipping. Notice a big difference with my Henny. Got her attention right away. She is leading a lot better. Thanks, Steve, for the great product and all your help. Ken says, it works exactly as Steve says and demonstrates. The come along rope is worth every penny. A penny. My mule has tuned up with just a few minutes of work. I could go on. There's There's a lot of reviews there. So folks, don't believe what Steve says. Believe what folks say about what Steve says. The proof is in the pudding right there. All right, let's make sure that we get all the questions answered here. Uh, don't want to leave anybody uh, uh, hanging. We've got Gary saying, uh, someone recently asked if progress is going well under, if progress is going well using the Mule Riders Mark, Martingale. What is the advantage of changing over the, if progress is going well, using the Mule Riders Martingale, then what is the advantage of changing over to the Trail Riders bit? I'm interested in hearing Steve's reasoning. Okay, so here it is. The Mule Riders Martingale is meant to be a six-month program because it communicates to the tongue, all right? It communicates to the corners of the mouth, the bars of the mouth. Eventually, they will start getting hard in the mouth, mainly because of the continual pressure on the tongue. Now... As we progress in three months, training four to six hours a week, in three months we can start using more of the uh, trail rider bit and less of the finished bit. And here's what the trail rider bit does. It whisks the top of the roof of the mouth. If you think the mule is doing good with the mule rider's martingale, he's going to be doing ten times better when you go into developing palate communication. Now... You, you're going to always go back, folks. You're going to go back to foundational training. Use the Mule Riders Martingale. Why? Because if they stand around or because maybe somebody made a mistake, it's like a toolbox. Go back to work with it. You know. So stay. You, you, you do not use a snaffle bit unless you are training or fixing a problem. After three years old, no mule, no donkey, none of them should be in a snaffle bit. They should be in a finished bit. All right. Uh, all right, let's see here. I got a, another question on email. We're almost done here, Steve. Uh, Sam asks, I'm just wondering how long is the foundation video? I have a two-year-old donkey and I love her, but she got so pushy I had to pop her on the nose she would not get out of my space. Uh, I know that probably wasn't right, but she needed to move. Other than that, I can, I can catch not fond of halter but she lets you loads uh let's see trims is popping her going to ruin all of the work i've done i'm going to order the foundation bundle thank you so much for your help um so it sounds a little bit like what we were hearing before um yeah. any any comments i'm gonna i'm gonna send sam a reply here yeah again you know folks don't hit them in the nose or in the head they don't need that you know uh tap them in the shin or maybe slap them on the chest, something like that, with a little bit of hate with that. Um, but don't hit them in the head. Even if you pop them with the rope, what the worst is going to happen is, is is they're going to get a little head shy. But here's the thing. They're sensitive about their nose. Donkeys are sensitive about their nose. And then the mule gets that as well. So when it comes down to these guys in your space, folks, the mule, the donkey is not allowed in your space. You can go into their space. They are not allowed in your space, period. Always approach the shoulder. Do not approach the nose. That's the key, 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 key thing right there. All right. 
this is the last question I have on email, and then I'll finish up on Facebook. Bob asked, how much weight will the Tapaderos add to your trail light saddle? How much weight do two taps add? Uh, well, if, if he's using the guy's uh, stirrup, which is six inches wide, it's going to add uh, about three and a half pounds on each side. So you're looking at about seven pounds it's going to add. But don't look at the weight, folks. Look at your safety. That that tap is the safest stirrup you can have. And if your foot goes through that tap, it's only going to go so far. Therefore, you're not going to get dragged, folks. That's, a, that's my main thinking. And then also going through the brush and this sort of thing as well. So, uh, you know, get that tap. It's, it's worthwhile. All right. Let's hop back over onto Facebook here and just make sure that we've got all of the questions handled. Well, I think you know, we have like one or two that we still need to answer. Okay, folks, okay, bear so the reason with I'm me. in New Mexico is because I'm heading up uh, to a ranch to do some training of some cowboys on a, on a ranch up there. They're going two mules from uh, horses, and uh, this it's, it's not completely a, a working ranch. It's just a, some folks that really enjoy uh, the ranch atmosphere, and uh, and and they've got some guys and gals that are that are been in the horse world. They don't know a lot about the mules, but these folks really want to get mules, and so here they go. I'll shoot some video, uh, Dave, and we'll get it over to you. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Susan Callahan says, "I love my Steve Edwards Trail Light saddle, and so does my mule. We love hearing that. Uh, happy owners, happy riders, happy uh, happy mules." Uh, Lori says, "Steve, that is one classy hat there." <laughs> this old hat's about twelve years old, maybe a little bit older. It's been beat around a little bit. Uh, okay, so Sherry came back. So we've been having an ongoing conversation here. I wanted to get back to this. She says, I'm using your saddle in Britchen. Lately, I've been riding in my rope halter. Honestly, I felt like he responds best, but maybe it's not a good choice. I've been trying to do more groundwork, thinking it might help. So maybe I need to go back to the snaffle. I appreciate the time you are taking to respond. I will check my saddle placement again as well. So first and foremost, Sherry, I'll let Steve uh, talk here in a second. Um, but first and foremost, I want to say to everybody, send pictures of your animal tacked up, saddle placement and all, send them to Steve, 602-999-6853. Send a text message. Steve will get right back to you as soon as he gets to his phone and starts taking questions. Um, and, uh, and he can help you right there over the phone, you know. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes folks will uh, folks will say, "Hey, I got the saddle. It's not working. What's your return policy?" And here's what we say: Well, we want to get on the phone and we want to help you. And Steve turns around every single problem, and folks come back and say, "Gosh, I'm glad you talked with me because I didn't know to make those adjustments." That's why we've got the saddle training course. But on top of that, for your unique animal, send a picture, text it. And he'll tell you exactly what needs to be. So uh, so he says, or Sherry said, using your saddle and britchin, riding with a rope halter, feeling like it's not a good choice, doing more groundwork, maybe I need to go back to the snaffle. What do you say? Don't ever, 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 folks, ride with a rope halter. Don't do that, okay? Your bit is going to give you far more communication. Now, can you ride with a mechan hack mechanical hackamore? Yes, if you ride 80% off your legs riding 80% off your legs, then you can use a mechanical hackamore, but I do not stay in it all the time. I mainly focus with my mule riders, uh, Martindale or my uh, trail rider. Right. So don't ride with a halter, folks. And also, is your halter adjusted incorrectly? You know, you might want to consider that. Uh, Richard Matthews says, Morton Chaplin, Steve. It's good to see you again here, Richard. Appreciate that. Fire chief, right? <laughs> yeah, now that's that's my captain's fire department. There we go. And he said morning, four for four thirty eight. Must be morning to him. <laughs> <laughs> Working hard, uh, waking up. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for all you do in the mule world, says Sherry. Sherry, thank you so much. I know a lot of times it can be kind of difficult going back and forth and making sure that we understand and and whatnot. Really appreciate you having such a, an amazing spirit. It really speaks to how much you love and appreciate your animal. Um, and, uh, and the respect that you have for Steve that you would allow him to speak into it. So we're really grateful for that. Uh, it doesn't fall short on us 
very, very appreciative of, uh, of the platform to speak into, into your life and other people's lives. Uh, uh, Rally, uh, Rally says, always good info. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Rally, let me know if I said your name correctly. Would love to get the correct, correct pronunciation. Micah says, on the martingale, is the bit too wide for a donkey of a smaller-mouthed mule? You know, folks, it, it's not important to have it close or farther apart. What's important is how your hands are moving. So you can have on a on a donkey, you can have a five inch bit, you know. And it's, yes, if you can stick your finger in each side, that's my perfect measurement. As far as I'm concerned, I don't like the bit sitting completely against the mouth. But it's okay; it'll work as long as your hands are right. Your hands are important. Your hands are controlling that bit, and the bit's only going to be as good as your hands. All right, we're very close here. Uh, Yolanda says, roll palters are dangerous. They're great for training, dangerous for riding. Uh, Todd is watching from Wisconsin. Todd, we're glad that you're here. Uh, let's see. Kate says, hi, Steve. Have a great time in New Mexico. Sorry I missed you yesterday. We will catch up next week when you get back and get me outfitted. Kate from Washington State. And here is the last question. This is from Linda. Says, I don't want to hog all your questions. Linda, you're not hogging at all. We're glad you're here. But you all got me thinking. This is a your space, my space question. I love on my Theo each morning before turning him out. Run my hands over him to check him for scrapes or trouble. Run my hands on his legs and belly and finish by scratching his chest and hugging his neck. He hangs his head down on my back and hugs me nice and gently. Then I fly spray him and lead him out of the barn. I really love the affection and it looks to me like he does too. Please tell me if this is okay. Before I bought him last year, he was a children's ride. He was offered for sale because the kids wanted faster rides. <laughs> oh, I don't. That just tickled me. That just tickled me at the end there. Uh, but what do you say there? She's really enjoying this affection and the and the physical connection she has. Is that good for him? She she gets a sense that it is. But is it good for him? Is it good? Is it? What, what do you have to say there? You're putting yourself in a dangerous position. Folks, let me just give you another example. I had a lady who was telling me she used to put a carrot in her pocket, and then the mule would come up and get the carrot. One day the carrot wasn't there, all right? And the breast was, and she had to have some surgery. Okay, another client, they went to give a carrot, and went to give the carrot, and, and the carrot wasn't there, but the finger was, he took it out, all right? They're too close, they're in your space. No, you go to them, them go to you. Now, now the hugging thing, where they really throw their neck over, listen, that can be good, that can be bad. Most of the time it ends up being bad. Because if they all of a sudden decide they want to play with you, they take a nip out of you, that's playful to them. Listen, it hurts when one bites you, you know? So look, my space, their space, you're allowed to go into their space, you can give them a hug, and then get out of their space. But don't allow them to come into your space and give you a hug. I don't want to visit you in the hospital. Yep, absolutely. And and a good point to make there, Linda. I want you to know, uh, Steve's answer in from a, a, a practical standpoint. I want you to know when I hear that, um, I'm a city slicker, and and I hear, oh, it's a great connection. What I love about this community is, and, and what Steve is able to do here is, he's able to help us understand how to love on our animals in ways that are most appreciated by them. It means a lot to us. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, my relationship with my wife. She has certain love language. She has certain ways that she likes receiving affection and affirmation from me. Gift giving's yeah. not one of them. I could buy her, you know, this is going to make some of, some of the ladies go, what? I could buy her something from Tiffany's and it would be the exact same to her as if I had gotten it from Target. I mean, maybe a little bit better, but if I come up yeah. and I just tell her, I say, hey, I love you so much. You're such a blessing to me. You're a great man. All of a sudden, she just, that, that just means the world to her. And so that same concept kind of applies here in that we got to find the way our mules and our donkeys and our animals like to receive uh, and accept affection and reinforcement and then speak their language because that's what's going to mean the most to them. Uh, Kimberly says, so grateful for this program. Thank you both so much for giving so much of yourselves. Kimberly, thank you for saying that. Uh, really means a lot to have acknowledgement like that. We appreciate that. Um, last thing, folks, I want to make sure to tell you, hey, if you are not subscribed on YouTube, I want you to go over, click this link I'm putting in the comment section, 
and if you want to wait until we sign off, do it then. Um, I want you to go over to YouTube and subscribe to the Queen Valley Mule Ranch YouTube channel. We've got more videos coming out there, and we want you to catch all of them. We've got two out there in the last week. Go check them out. You're going to love them. Really good stuff. Steve, I want to let you get back on the road. We went a little bit long here, so make sure you tell Susan thank you. On behalf of the entire worldwide mule and donkey community, we are pre there she is right there. Hi. <laughs> she was totally expecting you to do that, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I probably get thumped on the head down that way, you know. We are Let's very see. grateful that you took some time to pull over there at the Sky what Skyline Hotel and Casino. Yeah, Sky City Sky Hotel City. and Casino. Hotel and Casino yeah. in New Mexico. Yeah, nice big parking lot. Yeah. Anything yeah, you want to say to the people running. before we sign off? Uh, no, just happy trails. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. We're going to get back on the road now. We've got about maybe two and a half hour trip yet to get up to uh, Santa Fe. And then we're going to spend a couple of days with some new mule and donkey people. And uh, we're going to be training on this ranch for a couple of days. And we'll shoot some video uh, so the folks can see it. And uh, we'll rock and roll from there. Good. Well, hey, Linda says, oh, dear, no more hugs with Theo. I will change and I will make sure I keep him respectful. We love hearing that, Linda. Thanks for asking an honest question. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody for participating this week. You make this show possible. It's a pleasure for us to come and hang out. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, until then, God bless and uh, take care.